Of all the orders sent by Hitler to his troops, there was one that stood out above all the others. This was the famous order to remove the sleeve bands with his name, which he gave to his elite Waffen SS divisions, after their failure in the last major offensive of the German army in World War II. Everything has been written about this event, and over the years it has been greatly mythologized. Next, in this program, we are going to analyze the direct testimony of the main protagonists involved, and we are going to clear up doubts once and for all about what really happened. But first, let's briefly put it into context. Late December 1944. While the Germans are attacking through the Ardennes, in Hitler's last great gamble, the Red Army lays siege to Budapest. With the Soviets besieging Budapest and threatening the Hungarian oil wells, which are the last remaining ones for Germany, the new Hungarian front becomes a priority sector to which the best divisions of the Waffen SS will be assigned. The first unit to be sent was General Otto Gilles' 4th SS Panzer Corps, with the Totenkopf and Weekend divisions. This unit, based in the vicinity of Warsaw since the previous summer, was sent to Hungary during the last days of December 1944, with the objective of participating in an operation to break the Soviet siege in Budapest. This first rescue mission, which was nicknamed Operation Conrad, ultimately failed and gave rise to two more new attempts that took place during the rest of the month of January. The last of these was Operation Conrad III, in which the 4th SS Panzer Corps, now composed of the 1st and 3rd Panzer Divisions, together with the Totenkopf and the Weekang, once again launched themselves around Lake Balaton in the direction of Budapest. This last German attempt to rescue nearly 90,000 German-Hungarian soldiers trapped in the capital ended up failing due to the strong pressure that the Soviets began to exert on the German wedge, which managed to reach about 30 kilometers from Budapest. Although the city of Budapest ended up falling in mid-February, the Germans continued to launch offensives in the sector, to which Joseph Dietrich's 6th SS Panzer Army was also sent. On March 6, 1945, the Germans launched the last major offensive of the entire war, this being the famous Lake Balaton Offensive. The SS Waffen Division's Leibstandard, Das Reich, Totenkopf, Weekend, Hohenstaufen, and Hitler Jugen participated in it. As we see, the entire German military elite gathered for the last time. Because the initial result during Operation Conrad III had been quite positive, despite the fact that only the Weekend and Totenkopf participated along with two more panzer divisions, with this large reinforcement a lot was expected from this new offensive. However, due to the great defense that the Soviets had established in the area, along with the sending of many reinforcement units, to which we must add the thaw, which made the movement of tanks very difficult, the offensive failed miserably. In this way, and after the stagnation of the German offensive, the Soviets went on to counterattack and in just a few days, they pushed the Germans back to their starting positions. By March 26, the elite Waffen SS divisions had not only been pushed back to their starting positions, but were retreating westward, getting dangerously close to Vienna. Far from there, in his bunker in Berlin, Hitler was preparing as best he could to defend the Oder, where the Soviets were located just 70 kilometers from the capital of the Third Reich. One of the hopes that the German leader had was that his elite units would triumph in Hungary, so that they could be quickly sent to the outskirts of Berlin to defend the city. So, when reports began to reach him that his best men had failed in his last assigned mission, and were retreating towards Vienna unable to stop the Red Army, his reaction was one of utter disappointment. During a meeting that took place on March 26, Hitler received another request for withdrawal from the commander of Army Group South, Otto Wohler. This request, along with other notices indicating that part of the 1st SS Panzer Corps, which included the Leibstandard Division, had already retreated without his permission, made Hitler very angry. In his memoirs, General Guderian, who was at that meeting, commented that the Fuhrer was very irascible with the SS Panzer Divisions, and that he felt betrayed and deeply disappointed. Otto Gunch himself, who you will all remember from the film of the sinking, since he was the one who carried Hitler's body after his suicide, commented years later the following. Hitler expressed his bitterness against the command with harsh words, especially that of the Waffen-SS formations and even that of his own Leibstandard. 
It was a terrible situation when the Fuhrer revoked the leather standard's right to wear his name on their sleeves. Everyone present remained silent. Hermann Goering, who did not enjoy great prestige at that time, said something to the effect that the Waffen-SS, especially the Leib standard, had fought valiantly on all fronts since the beginning of the war, and they had already lost their authorized staff several times. He considered this measure unfair and a betrayal of the men and officers, and especially Joseph Dietrich. On the other hand, Himmler did not say a word in defense of the divisions of the 6th SS Panzer Army. The next day, March 27, Hitler finally decided that he was going to process the order and sent a telegram to the headquarters of the 6th SS Panzer Army. The message said that the Fuhrer did not believe that his troops had fought as the situation required, and that consequently, he ordered all Waffen-SS divisions of the 6th Panzer Army to remove their armbands with his name on them. The officer who received the order at the Dietrich barracks was Lt. Col. George Meyer, who left the following testimony. Full of anger and indignation, I was about to lose my self-control, when the door opened and Joseph Dietrich entered. I then informed him of the morning situation and handed him the scandalous teletype. Dietrich read it, turned slowly, and leaned over a map table, resting it with both hands so that he could not see her face. He was deeply impressed and moved, and it took him a long time to get over it. Then, after a long interval, still leaning over the table, he said in an unusually low, almost fragile voice, reflecting the deepest disappointment and bitterness. There, it's thanks for everything. Then he stood up, looked at me with moist eyes, pointed to the ribbon on his sleeve that read Adolf Hitler, and said, This will stay put. And we are not going to send this message to anyone else. Immediately afterwards, he left the room, he got into his car and went to the front with his soldiers. Although Dietrich did not want this message to spread, in the end, by other officers of the 6th SS Panzer Army who had also found out, the order was filtered among the soldiers. To tell the truth, this order did not have much meaning, since most units had already removed their cuff tapes before the transfer, so that their units would not be recognized by any spy or allied intelligence service. This action, along with many others, was part of a strategy to camouflage the divisions. On the other hand, in terms of morale, it did have a greater impact, since those remaining veterans who had fought in Russia, Normandy, or the Ardennes, felt deeply shaken. Added to the enormous difficulties they were going through, for many it meant the loss of faith in their leader and victory. However, loyalty to their comrades and officers remained just as strong and all units continued fighting until the bitter end, which would come a month and a week later. Finally, the vast majority of these divisions were handed over to the Americans in early May in the vicinity of Austria, in an intentional action to avoid being captured by the Soviets. So, what did you think of this event? What reading do you make about this order and the reaction of Dietrich and the rest of the officers involved?